Hello, Mr. Beagles. Yes, sir. It's Dipper Rachel, and we're back with another episode of If My Heart Had Wings. Where we last left off, our friend took us to the mall where we met Ageha and her sister. And now we're in sort of like a lunch date kind of quadruple trio thing. God, I'm always terrible at explaining stuff. Let's see how it goes. What's up, Anchan? Before we had realized, Anchan and Hotaru had come back, but were standing a little further away while watching us. What do you want? Lemonade or orange? Lemonade! I'll have orange. I take the can of juice and crack it open. Thanks! As we enjoyed drinking the juice, Anchan watched us quietly. What is it? Well, it's like we've gone back to the past. The two of you are together again. Okay, and I look at each other while drinking our juice. And then we just locked eyes and never could unlock after that day forward. Then people looked at us and thought we were creepy. Then, embarrassed, we both laugh. There's one more person missing, though. It's typical of Mabu not to be here at times like this. He's always been like that. Even when we all got caught playing tricks, he'd always run away by himself. But, but later on, he would always cry while apologizing. That guy is a handful, isn't he? Aga sighed as she said that, and Otaro and I left. Even Mabu managed to get a girlfriend. You guys had to give it a shot too, you know? In response to Anchan's teasing, the rest of us blush. I'm fine. I don't know about Ayo, though. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Hey. You don't need to tell him that. Look, 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 look. We can sort this out for ourselves, okay? You don't need to explain anything to him. What? Oh, you weren't... Um... You weren't saying, like, us two and, like... Never mind. Never mind. Really? I've just come back here, haven't I? But you're the dorm mother of a girl's dormitory, full of cute girls, and you're getting along well with them already. Huh. Seems like Hotaru is getting a little, uh, jealous. Hotaru, I mean, if you want, you can you can be a part of the dormitory too. I mean, I mean, we have plenty of rooms, plenty of beds, plenty of uh, other stuff to come equipped with, helping you stay at a good place in the dormitory. No nothing to fear. I'm, I'm always there for you. H hey, don't say it like that. Ah, uh, that girl, huh? She sure was cute. Not you too, Anchan. Oh, I think she is getting jealous. Just, just a little, just a little. Otaro looks at me with suspicion. Otaro, look, I'm not taken. Yet. I mean, if you want to go at it, you... I'm right here, baby. Right here. Otaro, it's not really like that. I'm just working as a door mother. But Ayo, you're cool. You'll get a girlfriend soon. I said it's not like that. Ah, jeez. I'm thirsty. I drink down the rest of the juice in one gulp. I got a grin as she looked at me, while Hotaru seemed worried. Hotaru wants the dick. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm. Well then, I'm gonna get going. What? You're going back already? Sorry, but I got an urgent job to do this evening. Thanks for inviting me out today, Anchan. It's all right. I had fun too. Oh. That's right. I almost forgot. Anchan came back and took some small parts from his pocket. Here. It's those things that you asked for. It was the parts that Senpai had requested. What are these? What are they for? They're parts for a glider. A glider? It's a kind of measuring instrument. One of those seniors at school asked me to get it. Ah! Suddenly, Ageha spoke in a loud voice. You mean Amine, don't you? If you're talking about gliders, it can only be her. Y yes that that's right. What's going on? Did you meet her at some point? 
kind of. It will take a while to explain, so I try to dodge the question. That's a that's actually a good idea. It includes some information that I don't really want to talk about for some reason. Hey, Ayo. Is she that... Yes. That beautiful girl. Uh... <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh... Girls. Calm... Okay, calm down. Calm down. Okay. Okay. Listen. She's beautiful. She's my senpai. I know this. But, look, look, look. Um, uh, Tatsuya, can you, like, <laughs> help me out here? <laughs> bro, bro code, right? <laughs> I got nothing to do with this. God damn it. Once again, I receive a dubious stare from the Himagi sisters. It's okay, Hotaro. In the time that I has been away from this town, he's become quite the pervert. Okay, look. You're most likely right, but come on now. You don't have to say it. Oh, really? That's right. It's such a shame. Hey, hey! Don't fill the head with such nonsense. I mean, I could, I could have a crack at it. Don't, please. Please. I, I beg you. Come on now. God, I think she's right. I probably am a pervert. No, not probably. I am. God, I can never take that back now. Well, well, shit. Shit, just... <laughs> what you guys really puts my mind at ease. Don't just stand there laughing. Back me up, Anchan. What? There's nothing wrong with it. Being interested in someone. Falling for someone. The... Okay. I get it. It's perfectly normal. But to these two... They want me dead if I say anything nice about Senpai. So like, can you, I don't know, help a bro out? Anshu gave me a squeeze as he puts his arm around my shoulder. Finding something new is a good thing, Ayo. Speaking into my ear so that only I could hear, Anshu let go of me. What? See ya. Don't make too much noise in public place. Raising one hand and waving it gently, Anshu went home. Anchan, you're... you're dead to me. <laughs> well, as long as they don't kill me, then you're fine. After Anchan went back, we went to Himegi Sports to say hello to Agiha's father. What about Hotoru's? Isn't that her father, too? Then I stayed for a little while, enjoyed some tea and cakes, and soon it became evening. As I walked along the street to the dormitory, I still felt like I didn't want to go back just yet. I might go for a little stroll. It's changed a lot around here. It's a beautiful place, I'll give you that much. Before, there was only an embankment here. We used to play here a lot, catching koi and crucian carp, but now it had a promenade and had been made into a walking course. Sorry, I um, accidentally skipped over that dialogue. It said, well, this was just right for taking a stroll. And then it's, I walked slowly while gazing quietly at the lake, died by the setting sun. My hometown had changed a lot in the five years, but the important things hadn't changed at all. Finding something new is a good thing, Ayo. Finding something. I'm still confused. I'm honestly confused what he meant by that. As I speak quietly to myself, I look at the view on the other bank. The windmill standing on the gentle slope faced the wind and slowly turn. It'd be a little nice if it had an animation. I don't think that's an animation, it's just a picture. That would have been nice, though. Even so, the chef's ramen was really tasty. Next time, I'll try the dipping noodles. Dipping noodles? Uh-oh. Uh, wait, you were from before. Maybe. Are you from from the the grocery store? Shit! Why do I always have to ah forget your voice too? Oh god, I'm gonna give her such an awful voice because I don't have any other voice to give her. <laughs> god, I'm such a good voice actor. Ten out of ten. A little further away, 
Someone was there. It was a petite girl. She ran her hand along the fence, and like me, was gazing at Windmill Hill on the opposite bank. Someone was there? I don't think anyone was there, so I was talking to myself, but it seems that she heard me. Huh? You're that... She is! I knew it! The mood about her was a little different, so I didn't realize straight away, but no doubt about it, it's the girl who was in the supermarket yesterday. Yeah, I was right. The girl who bought a lot of 2,980 yen per 100 grams meat to make curry. I don't know how much that is, but it seems like a lot. Was the curry nice? How do you know about that? Don't you remember? Yesterday in the supermarket. Ah. Oh. That might not have been me. Huh? What on earth is she talking about? That was my older sister. Maybe she walking around cluelessly and a guy tried to chat her up again. Older sister? It was Sukuyaki and Sushi. Huh? That was yesterday's dinner. Oh. I see. She was talking about what was bought at the supermarket. I guess that's what happened. There was no way you could make curry with something like that. It seems that right at the last minute, she started to see sense. See sense? English. Well then, I'd best be off now. Hmm. Sh sure. I totally felt like for her, talking to me was too much hassle. So she dismissively got up and left. It was a completely different feeling to when I met that girl in the supermarket. While thinking how strange it was that there would be such a complete change in a girl whose name I didn't even know, I returned to the road. Or she could be a twin. It wasn't far from the lake to the dormitory. I didn't have any time to think about it much before I got back. Something new. The parts that I had been given by Anchan were in my pocket. As I held them in my hand, I looked up at the clouds slowly floating across the sunset sky. These things are going to fly, aren't they? I meant the glider parts. They would become part of that white aircraft and would fly across the sky on those great big wings to the other side of the clouds. The reason why I decided to look up at the clouds impulsively like that might have been because of the girl I had just met. Forgetting about my silly fantasy, I got through the gate of the dormitory. And... Boom! Jumps... No, never mind, it's just code 3. Hey, not yet! You mustn't move yet! <laughs> code 3 was in her wheelchair, with her back bent over, slowly creeping forwards. I'm the one supposed to be keeping an eye on you, not the other way around. It was almost as though she was walking on tiptoes. What are you up to this time? I was quite used to her doing strange things, but I still hadn't acquired the ability to determine instantly what it was she was doing. She gave me a long stare. A cat? Actually, yeah, was that a cat? There it was, laying across the stone steps, licking and grooming itself. Then, on the other side, Hat was waiting. Are you trying a pincer attack? It didn't really look like that, though. However, if they did, they might be able to... No, Hat! Interrupting my thoughts, Kotter gave the signal. <coughs> Suddenly, Hat started flapping his wings and chasing the cat from behind. Surprise, the cat jumped and ran in the opposite direction, where Kodri was waiting to catch it. Oh no. I, I, I see why... I see that you're gonna catch the cat. Well, please don't tell me that's gonna be dinner. Yeah! I said... I said you can help in the kitchen. This is not what I meant. <laughs> There's other ways to get food. There's no way that will work. The cat, with brilliant footwork like Zendane's... Miss, you, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I cannot read that for the life of me. 
turned around while invading Kotri and ran away. Oh, it's ran away! <coughs> you really were trying a pincer attack. Hmm? What's that? You got something to say? Kotri realized I was looking at her and sulked quietly. What were you going to do once you caught the cat? Isn't it obvious? I was going to stroke it! It was as if she was saying, of course, but even if she caught a surprise cat as it was running away, it would go crazy and, at worst, scratch and cut her. Next time, make a better strategy. For example, you could try luring it towards you with a long piece of grass. Hmm, I'll think about it! She said as she earnestly wrote a memo. It looks like she always had a notebook tucked away in her wheelchair. More importantly! What? She points at me. This is a sign that she has a bone to pick with me. You're late! Why have you been loitering around? Huh? I went for a walk. That's why I'm late. You're not the boss here. I am. Now bow before me. <laughs> Get on your knees and gravel at my feet. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why that's funny, it just is. Her tone was like a mother scolding her child, wondering if there's something I was supposed to have done. The preparations for dinner! You're the one who asked me to help! It's still only 5 o'clock though. What? Whatever! You didn't even tell me when we would start! Sorry. If I start about 6, I usually get done in time. Hmm. Really? Well, well, do that for tomorrow. She said as she wrote another note. Do you mean that you were waiting for me? She must have gotten bored, which is why she decided to catch the cat. Yes, I was. However, I was waiting to fulfill my duties. Don't get any funny ideas. I don't know what sort of funny ideas you mean. Could you give me a few examples? I'll try teasing her a little. You can figure that out for yourself, Baka. Okay. C calm down. I'm. You're right. I'm the Baka, but still. I got no defense against that. Anyway, let's go. I'm starving, you know. Isn't that right, Hat? <coughs> See, Hat says he's hungry too. Okay, well then, it's still a little early, but shall we get started? Say, what we're having today? Maple eggplants and egg soup. Is that tasty? Yeah, it's great. It's my specialty. He says it's tasty! <coughs> Doing Hat's voice hurts my throat. As we go through the dormitory door, I realized that my feelings of unease had vanished at some point. She tried to do a pincer attack with a duck to catch a cat, didn't she? While I remember this, I started to chuckle to myself, and I realized that's when she's with me. I feel strangely calm, and then things start to feel weird again. Alright, I'm sorry, but I'm running out of time for this episode. So that's where I'm going to end it off. So I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. And I'll catch you on the next one. Hasta la vista, baby.